hello guys welcome to my channel today i'm going to take you through this pure mathematics color a levels music so the color background says uh, wherever this guy is a farmer he wants to optimize his resources he wishes to fence off his rectangular vegetable garden to use all his 100 meters fencing and adjoining hedge is to be used as one side of his garden so he has already procured some sunroof material to use as shade for his seedling and some of his vegetables this material measures 25 by 10 meters he is going to cut the corners and fold he is going to cut the corners and fold down using four poles that she wishes to buy to form a rectangular shade okay so the color consists of three parts part a or is to pass part a and part b and you are required to, to, to do both parts this color is not out of date whatsoever okay so part a it's saying produce a mathematical model that will help you to determine the maximum area of his garden then then part b of part a present this model using a diagrammatic approach showing all the details then part c is still the dimensions of this garden all right uh, so i'm going to take you to my working and i'll be showing you through how to conduct the workings okay okay uh, so for the first part uh, which says produce a mathematical module to help you determine the maximum area of his garden okay uh, we know that our area is equal to length times width so if we let our length equal to x we must also write our width in terms of x so that we'll be able to do our differentiation okay so if our length is equal to x what is our width equal to all right so if we get back to our question okay uh, i'll try to represent this diagrammatically we have a rectangular garden all right uh, that is something like this and yes a fence that is 100 meters okay but for the garden uh, we were told that one side is to be you, is to be fenced by a hedge okay so that will save our fence so let's say this side we have a, we have a hedge okay which means that uh, the total of these three sides must equal to 100 meters okay so if we let our length equal to x then what is the dimensions of this width which is equal to this one all right so what we are going to do to get these dimensions we're going to say uh, if we say x plus our width here plus our width on this side right we are going to get what 100 okay so we have something like 2 width is equal to 100 minus x and then our width is equal to 100 minus x divided by 2 all right so this expression is the one we are going to use to calculate our area so we are coming back here we have our expression for width 100 minus x all over 2 okay then we come back to our formula area is equal to length by width so that is x times 100 minus x all over 2 okay so if you multiply this we're going to get 100x minus x squared over 2 which is 50x minus x squared over 2 i'm sure this is not so much difficult then to determine the maximum point of our area we're going to differentiate once all right so when we differentiate once uh, this formula of our area uh, we differentiate 50x we get 50 then here negative x squared all over 2 it will be negative x because this 2 comes on and cancels out with the 2 at the denominator so we have the 8x is equal to 50 minus x right so to find the value of x which is the maximum we are going to equate this to 0 okay so we are going to say 50 minus x is equal to 0 then we solve that we get x is equal to 50 all right but after getting our 50 we must confirm if it is a maximum or a minimum point okay so we're going to differentiate one to get the, the squared a the x squared so if we differentiate uh, our 8x here again 50 will get 0 then negative x will get negative 1 all right so since our d squared a the x squared is negative this implies that the point which we got above that is when x is equal to 50 is a maximum all right so uh, we can go on and calculate our maximum area since we know that 
X is what 50 is a maximum. So, we're, 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 so here we come back and substitute into this formula, putting X is equal to 50. All right. So here when we plug in our 50, we get 50 multiplied by this and that, and we get our area score to 1,250 square meters. That is our model to find the maximum area that can be fenced using the available fence. All right. Then part B will say present this model using a diagrammatic approach to show the details, all right? So the diagram for our garden will look like this. I'm sure I presented this before when we were trying to find uh, the value of our width, okay? So our garden will be like in this form. On one side, we have the edge, which is 50 meters. Then on the other side, we have the fence, 50 meters, then 25 meters, 25 meters, all right? And I'm sure this is the diagram for the garden with the dimensions or the dimensions. Then the part C of part A, we state, let's state the dimensions. I'm sure we already got this. It's not going to be much of a problem. Our dimensions, our length is equal to 50, width is equal to 25, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so part B of our color, it says produce another model that will help you determine the height of the shade that will give the maximum volume of the shade all right then the part b says calculate the dimensions of this shade and verify that it can be erected inside the garden all right uh, so for this part uh, let me take you again to my working space okay uh, so for this part b uh, we want to calculate uh, the Height that will give us the maximum volume of the shed, all right? And we all know that our formula for volume is length times width times height, okay? So, but again, we have to represent our length and width in terms of our height, all right? So that we'll be able to differentiate and get the maximum height. So, uh, I'll try to draw this scenario to explain how we are going to express our length and width in terms of H, all right. So we were told that we have a, a tent or a sunproof material, uh, which is 25 meters length and 10 meters width, okay. So what we want to do is we want to cut the corners and fold the material that it will form something like a rectangular prism, all right. So uh, we are going to cut the corners and you must note that uh, the corners that we're going to cut are the ones that we're going to determine the height, all right? So if we cut off the corners, uh, all the corners, and then fold, if you try to visualize this, uh, this is going to be our height when you fold them, because we have a pole here, and another pole here, and another pole here, another pole here, and we remove these pieces so that we can fold uh, the four sides to form a rectangular prism, all right? Uh, I think we can represent it something like this, okay? We have, let's say we have this tent and we cut off these corners, all right? Such that uh, you can fold these to form a, something like a rectangular prism where this is the height. I'm sure you can see how this can be visualized, okay? So this will be our height, okay? So uh, again, go to our question. We are going to say this is our height, okay? So here we have height, height, height. Our eight here, our eight here, our eight here, our eight here. Okay, so we want to it to show. So when we cut these corners, we, the some proof material we we, we we have a new width that is ranging from there to there. Okay, this will this will be our new width and the oh, sorry, this will be our new length and this one will be our new width. All right. So this new width and new length is the ones where we, we want to express in terms of H, okay? So we can see that we have an H here, we have an H here. So if you're asked to calculate this distance, and we're also given that we have a 25 covering this whole space, okay? So we can see that uh, to get this one, we will simply say 25 minus H plus H, okay? This H plus this H, all right? Which will give us 25 minus 2H. And the same on this other side, the width, we have an H here, we have an H here, and the 10 meters covering the whole width. So to find this small 
you with we are going to say 10 minus 2h again all right so we have our width is equal to 10 minus 2h and our length is equal to 25 minus 2h all right so we are going to use these dimensions to figure out what will be the maximum volume all right so uh, we are going to come here uh, we have our length is equal to 25 minus 2h with is equal to so here is width is equal to 10 minus 2h and height is equal to h right so volume is equal to length times width times height so that's h times 25 minus 2h multiplied by this h all right so uh, if we multiply this we expand we're going to get something like this then we are going to differentiate in order to find our maximum height all right so to get our divide h we are going to differentiate here 4h cubed we take this down we have 4 times 3 which is 12 h squared minus 140 h plus 250 and for this is simple differentiation so we go on and equate this to zero and we solve the equation you can use the quadratic formula to solve this equation and you find your h is equal to 2.2 or 9.7 meters all right so we have our two heads here but we want to determine which head will give us the maximum volume all right so we go on and find the second differential that is d squared v dv squared so we differentiated this one again we're going to get 24h minus 140 then we plug in these heads into this equation to figure out which one will give us a negative and which one will give us a positive okay so when you plug in 2.20 here we can see that we are going to get negative 87.2 right and since this one is negative here this is what tells us that 2.2 is the height that gives us the maximum volume all right we are not saying that's the maximum height that we can employ but it's the height that will give us the maximum volume right because what we want to maximize here is the volume all right and here you can see that when you plug in 9.47 we get a positive which implies that when we use poles of 9.47 meters height we will get the smallest possible volume of the shed all right so uh, here we are going to conclude that the maximum uh, volume is the volume that we get when the height is 2.20 meters right and to get this maximum volume we can take this height and plug it back into our formula this one so the figure that we get there is the maximum volume but here we want to determine the height of the shed okay so we can get this height and that's for the part a of part b right then part b says calculate the dimensions of this shed and verify that it can be erected inside the garden right so for the dimensions of this shed we are saying height is equal to 25 minus 2h right so here is 25 that's the length okay length is equal to 25 minus 2 by 2.20 the one which we got here and this is going to give us 20.6 meters so this is the length of the shed and for the width we want to say 2 minus 2.2 meters to get 5.6 meters this is the width okay so to verify if this fits in the garden we go back to our part a where we calculated the dimensions of our garden and we got that the dimensions of our garden we have 50 meters and 25 meters so here we can clearly see that these new dimensions 20.6 and 5.6 are less than the dimensions of the garden hence the shed will fit in the garden all right without causing any problems okay so that's the part b of part b all right then part c will go on and then uh, part c of our color will go on and say present your findings to the guy uh, clarifying on the dimensions of the garden the length of the poles and the dimensions of the shade all right so here what the question is simply asking for is a summarization session of what we got from part a and part b all right you are just going to write a small report telling him that use these dimensions for this do this for this all right so we're going to just put uh, what we calculated before in writing such so that a layman can even understand what is it that we're trying to do 
Okay, so here we're just going to tell in simple English that uh, this is this. I'm sure I can go through this. Uh, I'm sure you can also write this in your own ways better than this. In fact, uh, of course, I'm not an English guy, so you might be able to craft a better report than what I just wrote here. I just summarized what is it that must be written when we're trying to clarify uh, to our client what he should do with what and how they should do it. All right, so guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we hope you are going to like and subscribe to our channel as we'll be posting more videos, more like this, and even for your future studies when you want to do mathematics or statistics, this is the channel that will cover you up. All right, thank you. We hope you are going to come back to our channel, be with us in the future.